Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a look at the Bystable Oscillator and we're also going to look at some of its uses and certainly one of its major uses has got very little to do with oscillation um, but it does nonetheless uh, use the circuit in a very significant way. So let's start by having a look at the circuit diagram um, for the Bystable when it's configured as a free running oscillator the circuit then of the Bystable oscillator and it's quite a, a familiar uh, chunk of circuit you may have already seen this um, in two applications essentially what happens is when the uh, oscillator is powered on one or other of the transistors uh, will go into saturation so be on and the um, collector of the transistor that's on will slowly begin to charge the 680p capacitor which is connected to the base of the opposite transistor and as soon as it reaches the point where the other transistor can switch on the whole lot flips over and the process starts again and on this circuit diagram we've got the output shown as being on the right hand transistor decoupled with a 100 nanofarad capacitor but it's important to remember that if you take the output from that side um, you'll get exactly the same thing as you would the other it'll just be 180 degrees out of phase when one transistor is on the other is off let's go and look at the um, circuit then uh, sitting on the breadboard here's that circuit built on the breadboard then and appreciate it's not uh, most exciting um, circuit to see visually there's a couple of transistors just tucked in there and these leads here are all going to the oscilloscope um, so we can look at what's going on there's the two capacitors and then we've got our four four resistors there coming to the positive line um, and I'm going to leave this side of the screen free so we can look at the oscilloscope trace so here we are uh, the yellow line here is probing the right hand collector of the sorry the right hand transistors collector so that was shown on the circuit as uh, as the output and you can see we've got a a square wave with a, um, a much uh, faster falling edge than we have rising edge and it's about 19 and a half kilohertz with this component selection no particular reason for picking that other than um, it was just uh, sensibly sized components so first thing to note is there looking at the um, at the stats uh, we've got um, a rise time of about f um, well um, a mean rise time of about 5.5 microseconds and uh, a fall time of well it says 262 nanoseconds so that's the, the rise time is an order of magnitude slower than the the fall time so when those transistors do cut off um, my goodness me they cut off very very quickly and uh, the other the other transistor starts to conduct and um, that produces quite a a harmonically rich output I'm sure as you can imagine so it needs filtering here's a quick look at the uh, spectrum analyzer um, trace from that uh, from this circuit and you can see the harmonics um, drift away up into to several megahertz there so um, a rich source of harmonics if you wanted to use it for a, for a multiplier or if you didn't then you need to make sure the outputs well filtered um, okay uh, so I've got a couple of other um, probes connected here so if we look on uh, the, the purple trace on channel 2 this is the uh, capacitor that is at the base of the right hand transistor and as you can see um, the capacitor starts to charge up and when it reaches the threshold it causes the other transistor to conduct and um, there's that very sudden changeover and I've got the other capacitor on, uh, on channel 3 so you can just um, see that will just change the vertical trace so you can actually hopefully see what's going on there make some sense yeah there you go so we've got the two um the two capacitors charging up that's the blue and the the purple trace and the output is the um is the yellow trace so that's the uh, uh bystable as a, a free running oscillator okay that's the bystable circuit that we've just looked at um, so now let's have a look at a slight variation on that which is this circuit and the only thing that's really missing there are the two capacitors in the between the base and the collector of each transistor and what we've got here is what's called a, a latch or a flip-flop 
this is uh, usually called an SR latch set or reset and the two um, inputs at the bottom S and R uh, taking either of those high will cause the latch to flip between on and off each side and the two outputs are usually referred to as Q on the right hand side and bar Q on the left hand side that's a little bit of commute, um, computer nomenclature intensely bar Q means uh, uh, active low so let's have a look at that bit of circuit on the breadboard and see how it performs here then uh, is the um, Bicestable again, but this time configured as uh, as the SR latch, and the two transistors in the latch are actually are actually these two here. Um, I've got the outputs connected to LEDs, and these transistors are just acting as as buffers for for LED drivers, so um, they're not really um, part of the circuit that we're looking at today. They just um, making sure we get a sensible output and don't affect the, the output of the latch uh, and down here are the two um, the set and the reset buttons and I've just got them uh, through a limiting resistor here to the to the positive supply so the first thing to note is then um, if I've got enough hands to show you this I'll switch power on and in this configuration we can consider the red LED to be Q and the yellow LED to be bar Q, so 1 and 0 if you like, and when, when we apply power um, the state that it starts up in um, is not predictable as it happens here, it started up in um, in bar Q or, or logic low if you like so now by I'm pressing the relevant button we can switch the latch over and it remains in that state as long as power continues to be applied um, as long as power is on it remembers its state and that's the key point about this circuit uh, is that it's able to remember its state now we use latches in all sorts of circuitry a push button switch for instance where you push it once to switch it on push it again to switch it off that kind of thing but one of the most significant uses for this type of circuit is um, to enable um, circuitry to remember that condition and if you think about it that's a one bit memory so let's uh, explore that a little bit further and have a look at the circuitry for using this kind of latch um, as a as a memory storage location okay that's the uh, transistor uh, version of an SR latch uh, it's more usual to uh, build one using logic gates and here we've got um, exactly the same thing, it's an SR latch with the Q and the bar Q outputs and this is just using two NAND gates and it performs exactly the same um, function as the previous circuit. Now to make this useful in, um, in terms of computing uh, we need to add a little bit more to the front of that circuit, another two NAND gates and this bit of circuitry here allows us to have a data in and an enable line so we can either feed in logic uh, 0 i.e. low or logic 1 high at the data input and nothing will change unless we take the enable high or uh, now that could be a clock or it could be a write enable um, connection but essentially the latch will retain its um, state in other words it will remember uh, whether it's output is at Q or bar Q and it will continue to do that no matter what happens at the data input unless we choose to enable that particular uh, line at the same time. Well, a really nice way to implement this is to use a, a 74LS00 which is a quad uh, 2 input NAND gate we've come across that in previous videos and just as a reminder the truth table for a NAND gate is, is quite simple to remember it's a NOT AND and the high, the output is, is always high, uh, except when both inputs are high, in which case the output is low. Um, so normally completely high, but uh, unless both inputs are high, in which case the output is low. Okay, so here's the circuit that we've just been looking at then, which is the uh, latch constructed from the quad uh, NAND gate. Um, the latch 
part of the circuitry is on the, using the top half of the chip and the um, enable and data input uh, gates are, I'm using these bottom one and I've got uh, one if you like one bit of memory here and I've uh, duplicated the circuit here so I've got identical circuit there so if you like we've got addresses 0 and 1 um, why not we'll keep the computer analogy going and both these locations have got an enable uh, but they share the same data so um, what I'm trying to do here is create the analogy of a, of a shared data bus that you might find in a, in a computer so let's um, let's power on and uh, again the LEDs as before red is logic one uh, green is logic zero so there's your two locations wh wh how they start up is not predictable um, it just depends uh, they've both started up in uh, logic uh, zero um, a moment or two ago and I just checked the circuit out they actually both started in logic one so it is entirely unpredictable so um, the data bus with the button not pressed is effectively logic zero if I press it it makes the data bus logic one and the first thing to note is changing from naught to one has no impact at all on either location and that's because neither of the neither of the memories memory locations or latches are enabled because those buttons are not pressed so let's change the data bus to one so I'm now holding down that button so data bus now contains logic one and let's just enable that chip momentarily and now I'm going to loose the data bus so data bus is back to zero but as you can see uh, that chip was enabled briefly while the data bus said one and this this bit of memory has remembered that that's in state one so we'll keep again if I change data bus from naught to one naught one doesn't make any difference to either address I'm going to put one on the data bus again and I'm now going to enable the the right hand chip hopefully I can get me a hand out the frame so you can see it and the moment I do that um, it's now gone to logic one and the data bus is now actually at logic zero again because I've loosed the button so if I now with the data bus on logic zero if I just briefly enable this uh, location you can see it drops back down to logic one and whatever I do on the data bus makes no difference to either memory location because neither is currently enabled so what I've created there are two bits of memory storage and I wanted them to share the common data bus so that uh, you could obviously get an inkling of how they might be used on a computer so let's just uh, conclude by having a look uh, at an example of a chip that actually um, uses this kind of thing maybe in a slightly more complicated way uh, because there's um, 64 killer bits so there'd be 64k of those circuits I'd need a lot of breadboards for that uh, so let's have a look at that chip now the 4164 okay just for com completeness sake and to illustrate how you might come across that arrangement on an actual uh, chip uh, the 4164 is a hopefully a good example this was a popular chip in um, the days of 8-bit computing it contains 64 kilo bits of memory so that's um, 64k of one bit memory locations and it would be quite common to have say eight of these um, uh, on the board and uh, each chip would contain a uh, one bit of the of the information a one bit of the 8-bit word and there's some quite good examples of how that helps sometimes with fault finding on Adrian Black's uh, YouTube channel Adrian's Digital Basement if I can find a good example I'll put a link up the top of the page here to something where you can actually see him using uh, the that that um, rather useful function of having each bit in a separate chip to help him fault find when he's looking for, for faulty RAM so the connections for the 4164 then don't need to worry about them all but uh, we've got a data in pin and we've got a data out pin i.e. Q which is either high or low and obviously we can have the data in can be high or low um, there's eight address lines from A0 to A7 and that allows us uh, to address um, the 64k and then 
We've also got uh, a right pin and it's bar right which means it's active low. So it doesn't matter what happens on the um, data in unless we take uh, the right pin low uh, the data won't be written. So two stages to getting the data into this chip then. First one is to select the memory address using the uh, address bus. So there's eight lines of address there to pick the byte, sorry the bit that you want to write to. Uh, you then uh, take the right pin low and then put your data onto the data in and that should write it into that particular bit whether it be high or low. Okay that's a practical example of, um, of a memory chip. Well hopefully that's been useful in terms of looking at the bicycle as an oscillator but also looking at it in its role as a, a flip-flop or latch and obviously the connotations for its use as a, a memory cell are particularly significant in this in this computing age. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have please click the thumbs up. If not you can click the thumbs down. Comments are always welcome. Please let people know about the channel. If you've not subscribed it would be great if you could and we'll see you on the next video.